Oklahoma's weapon laws are changing. A recent move by lawmakers now allows you to carry certain weapons. It used to be illegal to bring a dagger, a bowie knife, dirk knife, a sword cane with you in public without a permit. That is no longer the case come November 1st. We are joined now live by State Senator Nathan Dom, one of the lawmakers behind Bill 1159. Thank you so much for spending some time with us to talk about this. Glad to be here. Thanks for having me. I've got to say quickly, he did bring a prop. He <laughs> brought it. He brought a knife with him to demonstrate. So if this interview goes horribly wrong, uh, <laughs> he is armed and ready to go. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, but we did have a lot of questions from our viewers about this particular bill. Get sure. to those in just a second. But first, I do want to ask you, was there a particular instance or something specific that spurred you to want to dedicate so much time to this bill? Well, um, that's why I brought the knife that I did because uh, I started this process back in 2013. Okay. Um, as I was reading through our statutes, through our, our weapons laws and different things in Title 21, I came across some different sections. Uh, one section said that it was illegal to carry a spring type knife. So even just a simple little pocket knife that most people have that you could buy at Cabela's, Bass Pro, Walmart, Target, uh, just, just because it has the, that, that, that tension release on it, just a simple pocket life, knife like this was illegal to carry on your person in Oklahoma. Okay. And I mean, for especially in rural areas or even when I, when I brought this in this morning and, and made sure at the front desk that I, I wasn't violating the, the weapons policy here, um, one of the assistants there said, oh, well, our camera crew guys, they, they carry those around with them all the time because you never know when you not, might need to cut a cable slice a cable, something like that. So this is more of a tool for most people in Oklahoma, especially like I said in the rural areas, but most people carry a pocket knife with them. But up until November 1st, 2013, when I got the bill passed that repealed that, struck that part out of the law, it was illegal for Oklahomans to carry this and they didn't realize that. So there's other portions in the law that every year we've just expanded it a little bit uh, more and more uh, just to make sure that Oklahomans are covered if they do have that knife with them so they're not violating the law. Okay, so do you look at these more as tools and not weapons? I think most people do um, okay. in a lot of instances. I mean, a sword uh, cane. Well, the sword cane is the one exception that people will be okay. like, well, that seems more like a weapon, but it's uh, mostly it, it's used as a cane, especially for those people that, that need a cane that, that, that have that physical disability or whatever that they need a cane. It's a way for them to be able to have a protection for themselves as well, since they are more vulnerable. If they do have the requirement of that cane, it's a way for them to be able to provide that protection. I want to get to a question here. This one was from Kimberly. Does the state receive funds from the concealed open carry license? If so, won't this be one more revenue source that gets dried up? That's, that's an, an, an interesting question. Um, this part dealing with the knives doesn't directly affect the, the open carry or the concealed carry. That is more dealing with firearms okay. and weapons. So this shouldn't impact that in any way. All right, that was Kimberly's question. The next one we have is from Jeremy. How does one pass a law that the Constitution already allows? And, and that's one reason that we're working towards this. The U.S. Constitution and the Second Amendment uh, makes it very clear that the right to keep and bear arms shall not be infringed. Like I said, a lot of people look at knives, especially pocket knives, as more of a tool, but there are people that look at it more as, as a weapon. But the U.S. Constitution doesn't say you can only keep and bear firearms. It says arms, which would include various different kinds of weapons. So this is just getting Oklahoma more in line with the U.S. Constitution okay, as well. state Constitution versus the, the federal. Correct. Eddie had this question. He says this law is irrelevant. You can inflict the same damage with a pocket or a kitchen knife. Why waste taxpayers' money on this? Well, and uh, we kind of mentioned that in the previous question because it is we do have a right uh, under the U.S. Constitution to be able to defend ourselves. That's something that we should be working towards. It's not the only bill that I'm running this sure. year. You know, we have plenty of other pieces of legislation. We're still working and focusing on the budget. Uh, that's our main focus right now. But there's multiple things that we work through throughout the legislative process. This isn't the only bill that I have had passed and signed into law this year. There's plenty of other things that I've been working on to protect individual rights as well. Alan has the question, he says, why aren't guns enough if you take a knife to a gunfight? Then he went in and said, how about grenades or rocket launchers? <laughs> getting, getting a little silly there, but and a, a little a lot of people go go to that extreme. But uh, this is, is it should be the individual's right. They, they get to choose if they want to defend themselves and if they want to defend themselves by carrying a knife, that's fine. If they want to carry a knife, not for self-defense, but solely for the reason of being able to have that as a tool, they should be able to do that without violating the law. So that's one reason that we're focusing on striking out these knife provisions is because a lot of people don't want to carry that knife for self-defense, even though it's in our self-defense laws, sure. they want to carry it as a tool. So they should not be violating Oklahoma law, unaware or aware, whether they are, are not aware of what the law says, they shouldn't be in violation of it. So it just makes it easier to provide those protections to Oklahoma citizens. Quick 
quickly, we are running out of time, but what would be your message to our viewers who are maybe concerned that this is just going to increase violence, increase crime, if people are allowed to carry a sword cane or carry a Bowie knife, what would you say to them? Like I said, we started this in 2013, uh, passed this law about the spring type knives. 2014, we struck out some provisions dealing with uh, switch blades and other spring assisted knives. We haven't seen major crime sprees uh, dealing with those types of knives in the last two years since those laws have gone into effect. I don't foresee that happening. Uh, if it does happen, somebody could do it right now anyways. If they want to get a knife and want to commit a crime, they can do that whether or not this law goes into effect. This just helps protect law abiding citizens so they're not unknowingly violating Oklahoma statute. Okay. We we certainly appreciate your time. State Senator Nathan Dom would Thank love you. to have you back on to talk about some of the other things that you that you mentioned you are working on Look right now. To. I know you guys are very busy, but we will chat with you soon. When